Okay, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. My name is Melissa Wagner, and I am the product marketing manager within the Focus Solutions Group, and one of the products that I manage is Perk. And welcome to today's Perk Business Update webinar. This session is being recorded and will be posted on our Perk webpage. So if you have any questions or any any information that you'd like to hear more about, uh, feel free to look at the recording or give us a call or else um, go ahead and submit your questions at any time. We are gonna hold those questions till the end of the presentation, but we encourage you to you know, go ahead and enter those questions ahead of time. And with that said, I'd like to go ahead and introduce our speakers today. We have Joe Colera. He's the VP and general manager within the Focus Solutions Group. Um, he manages the Classic Products Group. Um, we also have Randy Rorden. He's the director of software development for Perk. And I'm Melissa Wagner. Like I mentioned, I'm the product marketing manager and your host for today. And as I mentioned at the very end of the presentation, we are going to get to questions, but like I said, feel free to answer them at any time. And with that, I'd like to go ahead and kick things off with Joe. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, can you hear me okay, Melissa or Randy? Can you just confirm? Yeah. Great. Beautiful. Uh, uh, thanks for joining us. And look, I mean, uh, obviously we're in crazy times. Um, you know, as we're all negotiating the, the COVID-19 uh, crisis, you know, I was, I was telling Randy and Melissa before we get started here while we're getting uh, ready to go live that, uh, you know, growing up, we had none of this technology. You went to a voting booth and you voted. And somehow, at least in the worst case scenario, by eight at nine in the morning, you had a winner. Here we are in beautiful 2020, the year of COVID, where we have a third of the people voted two weeks ago. We have all the greatest technology in the world, and it's now 12.03 p.m. in Boston, and they can't figure out a, a winner. Um, so this is, this is how it is in 2020, I guess. But on a really um, uh, serious, sensitive note on COVID, um, look, uh, we're very, very uh, aware of the effects COVID has had on our customer base, on our own employees at PTC, frankly. And uh, so, you know, if you're interested to hear what we're doing at PTC uh, to try to, to, to help our customers um, what, navigate through this difficult uh, economic impact in the coronavirus, uh, please go to goptc.com slash coronavirus to, to see what's happening here. We put in some various programs to, to, to try to help. Uh, here in our group that Randy and Melissa and I are a part of, uh, we had several uh, corona-focused special support kind of things that we've been doing, and uh, we really want to uh, try to help as we're still all going through this difficult uh, time. So reach out to us if you think there's something specifically that we can do. Uh, look. I just wanted to give you guys a perspective from a PTC standpoint. Um, the company is really doing well. We have a really broad customer base. You can see that the company is doing really well in 3D CAD, which is where the, the, the roots of PTC came from. Our product lifecycle POM windshield products are doing really, really well. By the way, this is right now in the middle of COVID. I don't mean our CAD and PLM products were doing well before COVID. They were. They're doing actually better now. The last two quarters uh, were the best PLM windshield quarters we've had in the history of the company. And I think that has a lot to do with so many people are struggling to find how do I do these things remotely? Uh, and when you have so many people working remotely with some people who cannot work remotely, we have to find a new way to get the two working together and with systems and uh, collaboration. And those where our products shine. And then, of course, Internet of Things, um, Euphoria with augmented reality and Onshape now, which is our SaaS platform. Um, and more and more of our products at PTC are going to go to SaaS. Uh, most of them are in the cloud, but um, um, you'll see more and more in SaaS. You can see that uh, geographically we're, we're uh, all over the place, no big surprise there. And we just um, um, released our earnings on uh, Wednesday night. And you can see here that last year our ARR by vertical was spread out pretty much the way it is uh, for FY20 just, that just ended September 30th. And as you can see, industrial, federal, aerospace, and defense is half the, the, the business here at PTC. So what 
you all do is very important to us. Um, and in, in the group that we're in, specifically inside of PTC, we even have a larger disproportionate number of customers in those two categories. It's more like 75% of our base is there. So, um, you know, part of us focusing on what you do is, um, is, uh, is what we're about here. We're in, in the, the group called the Focus, uh, Post, Focus Business Group here at PTC. <clears throat> I just wanted to call out that PTC has made great strides with inclusion and diversity here over the last couple of years, particularly. And just this week uh, was um, awarded winner in, uh, in uh, the Northeast for the Timmy Awards for uh, work Workplace Diversity. It's something that we've uh, uh, spent uh, more and more energy on, making sure we're as inclusive as possible. And, um, and we just hired, by the way, a, a senior vice president um, uh, for uh, diversity and inclusion here at PTC that just started on Monday, by the way. So we expect to do even, yeah, even better. Feel good about PTC that we'll be around for you as you, you know, we have this partnership together or if you're not a customer and considering uh, our developer tool <coughs> to, to buy from PTC. Um, we just announced our earnings for Q4 and our fiscal year end. <coughs> and you can see some of the comments from the analysts around, um, you know, that, that um, uh, uh, had comments to make here. Uh, in Q4, we had extremely strong new software bookings. Um, we, had, we had record uh, bookings in Q4. 98% uh, of our software revenue is recurring now that we do more and more of our business as subscription versus perpetual licenses. We just announced our third consecutive year of double digit uh, annual recurring revenue uh, growth for the company. So even though we're, you know, we're, we're trying to navigate through COVID, um, we're still in, you know, 10, 11% ARR growth, uh, annual recurring revenue growth. And our plan for FY21 that just began, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, we plan to grow even more. Uh, so we've sca we're scaling our global alliances. Some of you may have heard about Rockwell Automation. We have a, a huge alliance with them and Microsoft, and both of them are, are continuing to, uh, to advance uh, to very, very large scale degrees here. Uh, we have a really robust pipeline going into FY21, so business continues to look bright for PTC, and uh, we've had record and planning record uh, uh, operating profit and free cash flow uh, in, F in our FY21, and that operating expense discipline is what's driving our ability to grow our profits while we continue to grow the business uh, in you know, what is really difficult time. One reason why we're successful is that we don't just take all of our products and have them managed by product group. There are some that we do that way, but here we created the Focus Solutions Group. Uh, that's where Randy, Melissa, and I are part of that organization so that we can focus on all of our products and developer tools with the, with the undistracted resources to make our customers successful. And that can't be done if we said, well, you know, we're, you know, we're in the Internet of Things business, yet we want to make sure we're focused on, you know, Ada developer tools, as an example, or Perk real-time Java, Java developer tools. So we pulled those core developer tools and other software products into the Focus Solutions Group uh, so that they're a critical part of our ecosystem. And we can, we can successfully support, develop, uh, uh, you know, continue to market and go to market with the products and the technologies with a very reliable, experienced team that you can count on. Randy will tell you how long he's been here. I don't know, it's been a long time. Uh, it's many years. Um, and, you know, I've been here for 22 years plus as well. You know, we're protected. You know, we kind of have the best of both worlds here. We're protected from the newest technology. Augmented reality is, you know, is one of our newer technologies out there. Well, it'd be very easy for them to start poaching our resources to go work in augmented reality. Well, because we keep the business in the focus solutions group, we're able to stay committed 
dedicated and focused on what you care about and not get pulled away into all these distractions of what's the newest thing out there for PTC. So you can rely on the technology, you can rely on the people, and, um, and you know, I said it's best of both worlds. We get to still dip into new technologies from PTC. PTC. So Randy and I have conversations with the Internet of Things team, and we do talk to them, and we try to leverage things that are happening with that technology to potentially help the PERC product, for example. Uh, so anyway, we're here to be completely dedicated to you. Uh, within the Focus Solutions Group, uh, we have two groups of products. We have software products uh, that we're not here to talk about today, and we have developer tools. And so Randy uh, is here representing the developer tool part of the business. Um, and if you think about um, mission critical embedded developer tools, that's our sweet spot. And of course, with Perk, add on real time. And now you've got something really kind of interesting here. Uh, and so we have a lot, a lot of federal defense, some aerospace and industrial customers who really rely on these products not just for today or the next two or three years, but for the next 15, 20, 25 years on a particular uh, mission critical asset. Uh, so that's why we have a specific developer tool uh, focus of, of, of our business. And within developer tools, we have some ADA language products, Apex ADA, uh, that does compilers and runtime and <coughs> uh, test tools uh, for Apex ADA, object ADA, ADA world. Uh, there are a couple others like Teleuse uh, X32 uh, and, and a few other smaller types of tools that we have. And then there's Perk. And Perk really is a showcase of our developer tool suite of uh, tools. And of course, um, that's what we're here to talk about today. So with that introduction, uh, Randy, I'm going to uh, let you take over here and um, um, Hopefully you can see okay after you had your little yep, eye thing. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I appreciate it. My name is Randy Rorden. I'm the director of software development for uh, the Perk uh, product team. And I want to make sure I can control these slides. Let's uh, go there. But uh, we're part of a, a center of excellence, if you will, for uh, specifically uh, related to real-time Java. We have our R&D staff, uh, you know, in our in our team. Uh, we have independent product management, uh, quality assurance, technical support efforts, and consulting services. And so, just as Joe had mentioned, we're we're in, in sort of a little a little company within a company, uh, as a business unit. And within the uh, Focus Solutions Group, we have a great deal of autonomy and control over our destiny as we are able to sell and uh, maintain and, and develop our products. Each of our team members has uh, 20 and more years of, of experience in embedded systems. I've been working with Perk for over 20 years now, and uh, we're all uh, subject matter experts in, in real-time systems, in Java, specifically in, in real-time Java, and uh, compiler technologies associated with Java as well. Just to uh, share a, a anonymous uh, customer success story, if you will, there's a, a large aerospace customer we have uh, has been involved with Perk for many years now. Uh, they have been uh, working to migrate from 32-bit uh, Perk to 64-bit uh, over time. But they first, uh, back in 2019, they migrated from the Perk 6.x product. That's a Java 6 capable version of, of Perk up to uh, version eight and got that working uh, for themselves uh, and, and got it uh, integrated with their application. And in, and in this year, they've licensed the Perk 64 product and began migrating their native libraries to uh, support 64 bits. And they're currently stress testing their application on Perk 64 and uh, working with us to uh, resolve any issues that they run into. I wanted to mention them specifically because this experience really has uh, uh, pointed out to us just how important our customers are in the process of developing and improving and, and supporting and making Perk the very best uh, real-time Java solution that's out there. We've been involved uh, with uh, real-time Java since 1998. Our first deployments, actually 96, but the first deployment occurred in 98. 
Um, that was uh, from the original spinoff from Iowa State University uh, and Dr. Kelvin Nilsson, who uh, was the founder of the, of the company and the original uh, developer of this technology. We've moved through the years through various Java Standard Edition versions up through and including eight. And in 2014, uh, we were acquired by PTC. And uh, since then, we've added our 64-bit target platform support for both ARM and Intel processors. We've brought in, of course, multi-core uh, support as part of that. And we've been focused on embedded Linux uh, for our target systems uh, with real-time scheduling uh, enabled. And so we can get very good sub-millisecond response times on uh, Linux with uh, real-time scheduling policies uh, turned on. You don't need to have uh, you know, a hard real-time Linux. You can use a, an off-the-shelf uh, Linux uh, just with some uh, tweaks to uh, deal with the uh, real-time scheduling policies and get those turned on and used with PERC. We have been testing PERC with many, many application frameworks, including PTC's own uh, ThingWorks, Internet of Things uh, technologies. Their frameworks and SDKs uh, work with PERC, and we're happy to uh, work with our, our partners in, within PTC to uh, assure our, their, their mutual customers to have uh, access to a real-time JVM. So PERC is a clean room Java virtual machine. And by clean room, we mean that uh, we don't have any uh, licensed code from Sun or Oracle. Uh, it's built, uh, basically purpose built for the uh, effort of uh, getting uh, a Java virtual machine running in real time on embedded systems particularly. We have been developing to the Java standard edition specs, uh, as I mentioned, all the way up through Java version eight now. And we include uh, very critically some uh, developer tools uh, to help our customers optimize and run their applications in embedded systems with real-time response. And we've been involved with uh, real-world products and deployed in, in systems worldwide for over 20 years now. The real-time features of PERC um, in a nutshell are, are we have a, a patented real-time garbage collector it's preemptible and concurrent, which means it can run in parallel with uh, Java threads and is preemptible by higher priority Java threads so that uh, a Java thread that has a critical time uh, window can act and, and uh, take, take uh, the CPU away from the garbage collector if necessary. And then, and then the GC picks up where it left off uh, when that uh, critical time is over. We have an ahead of time compiler uh, that takes Java code down to native instructions. We'll talk about that in a minute. We have explicitly controlled thread scheduling, thread scheduling going on. So we control when uh, a thread runs on the uh, operating system and on what processor it runs and at what priority it runs. Uh, that's uh, completely different from a traditional Java virtual machine, which kind of just hands over the scheduling task to, to the OS. We lock pages in memory uh, to avoid uh, page faults and delays that can be caused by uh, the operating system trying to page uh, data in and out and code in and out of memory. We support priority inheritance protocol for dealing with uh, locks and, and resources that are in contention by Java threads. That all happens uh, essentially transparently behind the scenes. Uh, you don't have to do anything special in your Java code to make that happen. It just works based on the priorities that you set your Java threads to. We have precise timing APIs, letting you avoid uh, jitter and uh, delays that uh, can occur with the traditional uh, Java virtual machine APIs. And we have constant time object allocation, which is obviously very important for real-time response and determinism. So for our ahead of time compiler, uh, we have a couple of tools that uh, make use of the AOT compiler. It's just like a, a C compiler. It generates native instructions, in this case from Java bytecodes, which are uh, found inside of Java class files. And that AOT compilation can be done prior to the Java virtual machine ever running or starting. And it happens, in fact, uh, on a separate machine on your host computer as you develop your application. Uh, the RAMizer tool will compile those Java bytecodes to native machine code and then link that compiled code into a PERC virtual machine executable. It becomes a customized virtual machine containing your classes and the methods in those classes pre-compiled, AOT compiled uh, for fast startup time 
and uh, the classes appear loaded and ready to use immediately. They don't have to be dynamically loaded when the virtual machine begins. And uh, as a benefit, it discards the original bytecodes from the image, so you don't need to have the uh, bytecodes lying around. They can't be examined or reverse engineered uh, by some nefarious third party. Another way uh, the AOT compiler is used is the PERC accelerator, the PXL tool as we call it. Uh, again, we're, we're uh, generating native instructions from Java bytecodes, but in this situation, we're actually uh, augmenting a class file uh, containing the, the class that's being accelerated uh, with the compiled machine code. So we, we start with a standard Java class file, we pass it through the accelerator, and then that generates an augmented class file and those classes, of course, can live inside of jars. And in fact, we can augment an entire jar file and all the classes in a jar with a single command. So at runtime, the PERC virtual machine can recognize when the augmented uh, methods are available in the class files being loaded dynamically and will bypass the uh, JIT compiler and drop those uh, methods, those, that compiled code directly into, into memory and begin executing it. Now, uh, and also PXL can, can null out the original bytecodes if you want it to, and those class files, those augmented class files are very uh, opaque at that point. You can't uh, see the bytecodes inside of them. The uh, other benefit of PXL is as a, a feeder into the ROMizer, uh, where you can generate uh, augmented class files, and then the ROMizer can take that compiled code and use it as it builds a customized PERC VM uh, image as well. So those are the two really important tools uh, within the development tool set. There's others though as well, uh, and I'll mention one in a minute. But this is uh, our, our summary, if you will, comparison side by side with Java Standard Edition. We have real-time GC, we have ahead of time compilation, real-time scheduling, page locking, priority inheritance, uh, precise timing, and constant time object allocation, all checking the boxes uh, in the PTC column. We have one more tool that uh, we mentioned uh, in, in the previous uh, updates we've given, but it's a, the P console visual tool. It's very nice. Uh, it gives you a graphical display of your memory usage, uh, your running threads, your loaded classes, et cetera. This is essentially a monitor similar to J console for, for Java, but it's unique to PERC and, and shows PERC specific information. Uh, and it helps you track down your resource usage. Uh, you can figure out if you're getting a lot of near end of uh, out of memory uh, conditions, for example. You can also save the data that's being collected as a CSV file and use your own tools to analyze the results. So let's talk about PERC 8.4. This is why you all came here, I'm hoping. <laughs> so uh, 8.4 was released uh, last month, the end of uh, September. Uh, we offer both 32-bit and 64-bit um, SMP uh, products. The uh, support goes to uh, Linux x86, x86-64, and then and which is of course 32-bit and 64-bit uh, Intel processors, and then the ARM v7, which is the 32-bit ARM, and ARM v8, which is the 64-bit ARM processors. The uh, release also includes the latest OpenJDK uh, bug fixes and patches. Uh, these are important to uh, keep our product uh, up to date and uh, responsive to our customers' needs. We have performance improvements in class loading, in bytecode inlining, and some compiler optimizations as well. We uh, have reduced our CPU overhead for our internal timekeeping. This is our timer thread that in the past was using a signal handler uh, to keep track of a, 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 an atomic uh, time count, if you will, within the, the tick period, if you will, within, within the PERC VM. We're now using a, a much more advanced clock nanosleep API that doesn't require a signal uh, handler in place and much much faster, much lower CPU usage uh, assigned to the, to the timer. We do support CentOS 8 now and, and Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8 for uh, host support, as well as target support, of course. And uh, we've improved the customer experience on, on the PERC Accelerator and ROMizer tools. Give a little bit of info on that in a minute. And uh, improved our char set support with uh, now 171 available uh, char set encoders, which is identical to what OpenJDK offers. 
little more detail on PERC 8.4. So parallel class loading is one feature that's pretty cool. It's uh, something that showed up in Java starting with Java 7. Um, it allows multiple threads to load different classes uh, via the same loader and to do that concurrently. Um, it improves the runtime performance as a result of that because you have no bottlenecks involved in, in loading classes at startup time. And it avoids deadlocks that can occur with some custom class loaders that are out there, especially for things like OSGI frameworks that do unusual or different kinds of uh, delegation, if you will, for uh, determining uh, dependencies among uh, modules within the, the framework. We have an improved bytecode inliner. Uh, it, in, it has 70% uh, more inline methods versus 8.3 that improves performance. The uh, class load init uh, reductions are improved as well. Class initialization, I should say, uh, reductions are, are about 300 fewer classes in a fast JIT build. And uh, the ease of use uh, for Ramajur and PXL are important features uh, we've added to the 8.4 release. Uh, particularly, you don't need to specify which classes have dynamically loaded native methods. This has been kind of a thorn in our side and our customers' sides for a while now. Uh, you have to sort of suss out which of your Java classes have native JNI code that is going to be loaded dynamically from a shared object, for example. And you've got to specify those in a list to the ROMizer so he doesn't uh, force you to statically link those, those native methods. That's now the default behavior. So if it finds a native uh, method, and it's not told otherwise, it will assume it's dynamically loaded. So we've kind of flipped the logic on that. And that really takes care of 99% of our customer experience uh, issues. <clears throat> Very few customers statically link their, their native code. But when they do, then they can provide a list of those classes separately. 32-bit ROMizer now uses uh, temporary files uh, to reduce the Java heap usage. We were getting uh, into some memory out of, out of memory conditions with uh, large ROMized images. That's pretty much gone now as a result of using temp files for, for uh, data in the 32-bit space. And we've got a much cleaner and simpler PXL uh, output uh, format for the dump methods option, which gives us uh, information about each class and each method in that class and what the PXL uh, data supplies in, the, in that uh, case. Wanted to mention just a little bit about uh, our bytecode inliner. Uh, this is a, an important uh, feature for the performance of PERC. And bytecode inlining involves inserting the bytecodes of a callee method directly into the bytecode stream of a caller. So as a caller makes different uh, calls to other methods, those methods are, are eligible potentially to be brought into the, to the uh, caller's uh, bytecode stream. So why do you do that? Well, it's, it's for performance, execution speed. Method calls take time to uh, reach the uh, callee target method and marshalling arguments to and from that method on the stacks and, and the return value coming back uh, takes extra instructions and effort in the compiled code. Uh, and then of course, to invoke the callee and get the return. So a lot of that extra uh, marshalling and extra work around the process of making a method call can be eliminated if you then inline the, the bytecodes of the callee into the caller. Uh, why do, when do we do this? We do it just prior to our AOT or JIT compilation task. So as, as a method is being prepared to be compiled, we will ask the inliner to uh, perform uh, any inlining that makes sense to to be done on that uh, on that set of bytecodes. And then the expanded bytecode set is passed to the compiler to then generate the native code on behalf of, uh, of those bytecodes. Um, there's our exceptions. So not every method uh, can be inlined. When it's a, a non-private or non-final instance method, for example, the actual callee method may not be known uh, at compile time, for example. It might be in a subclass of, uh, of the class being uh, utilized, and you don't know that until the actual execution time. So that's one of the cool features of, of uh, Java. It's uh, very dynamic in its ability to uh, you know, work with, uh, with target objects and have sub, subclasses implement 
equivalent methods, for example, and and that's uh, that's a situation where you can't can't inline because you don't know what method you're actually going to call. But most private, final, or static methods are inlineable uh, because you know immediately uh, at, from the source code and from the bytecode uh, what what method is going to be called, and there's no no ambiguity there at all. And of course, you can set the, the threshold of the callee size uh, to decide just how much you uh, want to expand your methods by. Uh, the default uh, number of bytecodes is 60 when you uh, enable inlining. And uh, you can, of course, turn it off at any time and uh, set it to any, any value you wish. So our results from PERC uh, 4, uh, 8.4 is uh, significant. Our inliner has now improved uh, in a small JIT build with inlining size 60 from 3,100, uh, I'm sorry, 31,000 uh, inline methods to 53,000, almost 54,000 inline methods with an increase of, of 70%. And the number of uh, eligible callers with our improvements to the inliner is increased by 22%. And as an example for performance, uh, with, with these inlinings uh, turned on, compared to version 8.3, our LINPAC benchmark performance is up almost 13%, uh, just, just based on the benefits of that inliner. The other uh, feature of PERC that has been mentioned in the past, and it was something we uh, added in, in 8.3, but have improved in 8.4 is our ClinIt reducer. Um, what are these? These are class initializers or clinits. Uh, they are used, they're, they're a sort of specialized method that, uh, that the Java compiler actually puts together uh, for each class. And that method assigns non-constant values to any static fields of that class. Uh, the, there's one class initializer, uh, if there is any, uh, for per class. And that initializer must run exactly once and must run immediately before the first use of that class. And first use is constituted by uh, the occurrence of a new get static, put static, or invoke static bytecode instruction. So uh, why do we do clinit reduction? Well, it improves execution again. Uh, performance is, is better when you don't have to uh, initialize a class because you know that the class has been provably initialized already. And so that's what the init, uh, clinit reduction uh, anal analysis is all about. So you can, you can skip checking and you can skip uh, the initialization task if you know that uh, the class has already been initialized in your method. So when does that happen? Well, after inlining and prior to uh, the AOT or JIT compiler uh, acting on a, the uh, bytecodes of a method, the clinit reducer analyzes all code paths through that bytecode to identify which classes are provably initialized at each point in the bytecode. That's a pretty tricky task and uh, takes some, some uh, clever algorithms to do it uh, in an optimized way. Uh, during compilation, the compiler then uses that analysis data to determine if the clinit check uh, can be skipped or if it's required and then we'll insert the appropriate uh, native instructions to do the the check of the initialization. And uh, the how is left for, uh, <laughs> for a future event. So we may uh, write a white paper or do a technical note of some sort uh, that talks about the clever algorithm that uh, our developers came up with to, uh, to do optimal uh, clinit reduction. It's kind of fun, but it's a lot of work to, uh, to explain. <laughs> so we're gonna leave it for, as an exercise for the reader at some point in the future. Uh, really quickly for PERC 8.4, here's our target system requirements. Uh, these are exactly the same as they were in 8.3, with the addition that, of course, we now support uh, CentOS 8 and uh, the appropriate uh, other versions of uh, Linux that, that correspond to the later kernel. So all of these are, of course, uh, improved uh, kernels and glibc, later uh, glibc versions and GCC versions are supported, of course. Uh, so both PERC Ultra SMP 8.4, the 32-bit product, and PERC 64 8.4 are, of course, uh, supported here. And this covers both ARM uh, and, and x86, as you see. Roadmap, let's talk about the next release. Um, we are going to be uh, targeting uh, a dual release again of PERC Ultra SMP 32-bit. 
and PERC64. Both will be version 8.5. We're going to have additional performance improvements. We have some great ideas in mind there uh, for compiler, for inliner, and the runtime itself. Um, we are going to add a feature to PERC uh, that we're calling cross ROMizing, but it's also uh, cross PXL uh, capability from 64 bit hosts down to 32 bit targets. Uh, basically, it gives us the option now to use a 64-bit JVM to run our tools and emit uh, the appropriate code for a 32-bit target, whether it's x86 or ARM uh, target. We're going to have additional ease of use improvements. There's some things we, we've uh, got on the back burner for that. Updating to the latest OpenJDK patches and, and bug fixes. And uh, our release date target is September of 2021. So we've got almost a year, 11 months. Uh, to get that uh, out the door. And uh, watch for more information as, uh, as details uh, come out on what we're going to be providing in each, uh, each level of this uh, update for the new release. OK, we have some technical support and resources. Uh, maybe I can let uh, Melissa take over here. I just wanted to let everyone know that um, on our ptc.com page, we do have a page dedicated for developer tools. So I encourage you to go to there, go there and um, check out our PERC um, product page. And this is where I keep up updates regularly on data sheets. We, like you said, we just had the release announcement, so I posted that there. Um, we do have case studies, um, thought leadership, and of course, our white paper. So I really want to encourage you to go there and check it out, possibly bookmark it. Um, if you have any questions, there is a, a, a form on there that you can reach out to us directly and we can get any extra uh, questions that you may have answered directly from us. Um, next page. And then also, yeah, maybe I can yeah, I'll you jump want to in go here ahead. a little bit. Okay. Yeah, so, so this is a white paper that, uh, that I wrote uh, a couple months ago um, on the subject of garbage collection and garbage collector delays specifically. And uh, that's uh, right now up on our website. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a good opportunity to go take a look at it. Um, it explains how garbage collectors work in traditional JVMs, and it compares the four GC algorithms that are available in, a, in current Java 11 uh, JVM, traditional Java from OpenJDK uh, or Oracle. And then uh, it describes the PERC real-time uh, GC and the algorithm that is uh, used to uh, sustain real-time response. And we also introduce uh, the GC Stress demo program, which has been kind of in development off and on for a year or two now. Uh, but now we provide the source code to that demo uh, on GitHub. It's open source, uh, available under a uh, standard MIT type uh, license. And uh, you can go fetch that source code and compile it and play with it. And in fact, there's also a little demo version of Perk that uh, you can download and run with GC Stress. And uh, we, in the white paper, we compare OpenJDK and PERC64 uh, running the same GC stress benchmark and uh, give you a sense of, of uh, just how different the response times can be. And as uh, Melissa mentioned, the white paper is available on the uh, developer tools uh, page under PERC, under uh, ptc.com. So give you an opportunity to go uh, ponder and, and learn more about how garbage collector delays uh, can cause trouble and how PERC can avoid those issues. Back to you, Melissa. Well, maybe I can mention this too, I guess. We've got uh, downloads available, of course, uh, for our customers uh, with installation media, documentation, and updates, as well as our e-learning materials and technical notes. Um, and so, yeah, our active customers uh, who have support will uh, be provided credentials for downloading uh, these these items from the from the web server, uh, developertoolsusptc.com. So if you don't have uh, your current uh, username and password for authentication, uh, send us a note. Uh, developer hyphen tools hyphen support at you at ptc.com will get you what you need. Melissa. Okay, uh, so please enter your questions. I think we got, we got a couple in already, so feel free to enter them at this time. Um, first question, will PERC eventually support later versions of Java beyond, beyond Java 8? 
Yeah, that's, uh, that's always a fun question to think about. Um, so my, my first response to that is never say never. <laughs> so I'm not going to say never. Uh, it's certainly possible that uh, someday we will find a compelling reason to move to a later version of uh, the Java standard. There are some uh, tricks to that. There's some issues that, uh, that come into play. Uh, as you know, Oracle uh, changed their release uh, cadence and their licensing terms for, uh, for Java after version 8. And uh, they ceased supporting Java 8 with public updates uh, starting in January of 2019. And that forced a lot of their users to um, basically, you know, uh, buy uh, support licenses or port uh, subscriptions from Oracle or to go elsewhere. And that's caused a lot of upheaval in uh, the Java user base. And uh, with many of those users uh, opting to switch to uh, the free OpenJDK uh, project releases uh, that are offered by uh, other vendors uh, or from the Adopt OpenJDK community, which is supported by companies like Red Hat and Microsoft and Amazon and IBM. Uh, through Adopt OpenJDK and Red Hat, uh, maintenance of, of OpenJDK uh, 8 is planned all the way through at least uh, May of 2026, probably longer. So there's no great hurry to move off of 8 uh, based on the, the changes that Oracle introduced in their licensing terms and mechanisms. PERC incorporates the, the latest OpenJDK updates and, and patches with each of our releases. We just mentioned that. And we found that the OpenJDK project is, is professionally maintained. It's uh, well tested. And uh, so it's, it's very satisfactory to our needs for uh, updating the OpenJDK components within, within PERC. Migrating your apps to something later than Java 8 is uh, problematic at times. Um, there are some uh, incompatibilities that were introduced with the uh, Java module system starting with Java 9 and later. And that can cause some difficulty to be you know, forward compatible, if you will, to the later versions of, of Java. There may come a time when customer requirements uh, compel us to, to move to a later uh, long-term support version of Java, but uh, that day is not today. So that's kind of where we are. Okay, another question. You mentioned something about parallel class loading, improving performance. How does that work? Yeah, so um, prior to Java 7, uh, Java and PERC for that matter, um, had um, class loader uh, level synchronization. Um, so in other words, that means if a given class loader instance uh, it existed, it could only load one class at a time as an application is dynamically loaded into the JVM. So if, if, if one thread is loading a class and another wants to load a different class, using the same loader, whether it's a, cu a custom loader or the system loader, then that thread would have to wait uh, until the currently running uh, load is completed and, and then it will, it will pick up with the second thread. So that can be a bottleneck, especially uh, during startup of an application, you're doing dynamic loading with a multi-threaded application. So with parallel class loading, the uh, bootstrap loader, the system loader, or any custom loader that's properly configured uh, can do class level synchronization uh, for class loading. And that means the same loader instance will load different classes concurrently uh, in different threads. And if it happens that two threads try to load the same class from the same loader, then one of them will block until the other thread loads the class. And at that point, uh, the loaded class will be handed over to the, to the thread that uh, was blocked. So much better performance, much uh, easier to work with. And it also resolves issues with uh, frameworks that have custom loaders that need to, to delegate to, uh, to sibling loaders, if you will, during the loading process. Okay, next question. Why is cross ROMizing from 64-bit host to 30-bit targets important for the next release? Yeah, so um, there are two main reasons for this. One is, uh, we want to support cross-ROMizing from 64-bit hosts because uh, today you need a 32-bit OpenJDK or Java VM 
to run the PERC tools for your 32-bit targets. And it's becoming increasingly difficult to find a 32-bit OpenJDK or Java VM that runs on a Linux host. They're not out there anymore. There's, uh, they're kind of fading away as Linux itself is, is uh, fading away from 32-bit support generally. So being able to cross ROMize with a 64-bit JVM avoids that, that problem. The second reason uh, we were going to do this is that uh, a 64-bit JVM has a lot more heap memory available. And that means you can get faster ROMize times, PXL times, and improve ROMizer performance without worrying about an out-of-memory error condition occurring. So those are the two main reasons for supporting cross ROMizing in the next release in 8.5. Yeah, another question. Um, what is the difference between using Romizer and the PXL to a PXL tool? When should I choose to use one over the other? Yeah, so um, it's not really an either or uh, choice. Many of our uh, customers and perk developers use both. Uh, very, very to great uh, effect. Um, so the Romizer's job is to create a, a statically linked image that has all of the uh, application classes that you want to have and their associated Java library classes and, and their methods uh, basically packed into the Java virtual machine executable and available at runtime to the application. And uh, that's that's the purpose of, of the ROMizer. Many developers will then, for that reason, they'll put all of their application jars on the ROMize command line and add uh, basically add all those classes in those jars to the image. And then the ROMizer will be allowed to find any dependencies within the Java libraries that those classes require and pull those in as well. So that can end up with a very large image, very, very big. Lots of data, lots of, uh, of methods to compile. And that can take a long time to compile that code if, uh, if you're doing AOT. So um, one easy way to solve that is to use the perk accelerator or PXL tool to pre-compile any methods uh, that are in a given jar. So each of your application jars, you can independently PXL, augment those jars with the accelerated code, and then those jars are, are put on the ROMizer command line, and the ROMizer will pull down the accelerated code directly into the ROMized image without having to compile it itself. And that speeds up the ROMize process significantly. It reduces the amount of uh, memory overhead that the ROMizer requires, the heap memory it needs to do its job. And the whole process is, is much uh, more straightforward. And then if the application developer needs to change some code in, his, in a class or, or multiple classes, all he needs to do is re-PXL those jars that were affected and then re-ROMize again to pull that that uh, new uh, those new uh, methods into the ROMized image, so that's uh, a nice way to to sort of pair up the the two tools, the PXL tool and the and the ROMizer tool. Great, thanks, Randy. So we don't have any more questions at this time, but if you do have questions later on, please reach out to us directly or go to our website. Um, there's a form you can submit for more questions. I am recording this session; it will be posted online. I will send out an email to everyone who registered when it's available to view. Um, if you want to rewatch it, maybe you called in a little late or maybe you want to pass it on to a colleague. But thanks for your time. Um, thanks for participating. And any uh, any final comments, Randy or Joe? Yeah, this, uh, yeah, this is Joe. Are you hear me okay? Yes, uh -huh. Yep. Great, good, I want to make sure. Uh, look, if you have other questions, this isn't a one-time event. We have a partnership here. We have an, a dialogue, an ongoing dialogue. So. Reach out to Randy, welcome to reach out to Melissa or me and, and we'll get the right people to get you the right information that you need. Uh, if you have thoughts, suggestions about our roadmap going forward, we want to hear from you. And um, uh, yeah, so let us know how we can help you to continue, uh, uh, you know, helping you to be successful. So th thanks for joining us today. Appreciate you taking the time out. And I'll say the same. Thank you, Joe. Um, and again, the email address, if you have a question or, or an interest in uh, learning more, it's developer-tools-support at ptc.com. That will get you there. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.